One of the things that can be really fun to do with, um, with bisque molds and with forms that you're finding out there in the world, be it the thrift store, your grandma's china cabinet, um, flea markets, is, is to take objects that you find and sort of um, you can build stacked forms. You know, so, so you can build these sort of footed forms. Um, and you can try them out ahead of time by, you know, you, f you find the dishes and placing them on one another. Um, and it's a great way to realize new forms. That one doesn't work so well, but that's kind of sweet. Um, these little like pedestal dishes. So this can be a really fun little exercise to do. And um, then when you get an array of bisque molds, you can do that with your molds in your studio. So I'm going to show you how to build a footed um, a stacked footed dish. So I'm going to use these um, these two bisque molds. The reason why bisque molds work are because they are similar to plaster, pulling moisture from the clay. So you put your moist you put your moist clay on top of a bisque mold, and it starts to pull the moisture out of the clay, drying the clay, and then allowing it to be released from the mold. You know however many, 10, 15, 20 minutes later. That's why it works so, it fits so nicely into sort of a production-minded studio or practice, production practice. A slab for my dish. I'm going to use the nice soft side for the interior. And I'm going to pull the edges sort of tightly so I don't get any folds. What happens when you get the folds is you get something like this. So you really want to keep things spread out and go, make a few passes around um, rather than trying to get it all down at once. Take your pen tool, or in my case, my trusty colored pencil with a duct tape needle, and drag it along that edge there. And here's the body of my piece. And now I will build the foot. Gently place it on this foot. So here's, here's the bottom to my dish. And um, the one thing that's going to happen, you know, you're going to stack these two pieces basically on top of one another. Um, and the only problem with this being that where they come together, you're going to have two times the width of this, which seems like quite a bit of clay, unnecessary clay. So what I do is I just cut some of it out and it creates this nice little window underneath the dish. It's like a little vignette and um, so I just get rid of some of that. So there you have um, the foot and now I'm going to let these set up and then I'll put them together. So my pieces are off the mold. Here's the base, and uh, these are all, you know, again, a little less than leather hard, leather hard, something like that. And um, I've got the body of the pot resting on top of the bisque mold um, because I'm going to be putting some pressure on it. But now I'm going to attach the sort of the pedestal part. First thing I need to do is score the bottom. And I need to score this, um, slip and score this really well because basically I have two very dry, not dry, but two sort of drier pieces of clay going together and I need them to stick. So no wussy scratching here, very like aggressive scratch marks here because you really need the clay to bond together. So I'm going to sort of make it right on the spot and I'll do this. I'll give this a little drink and now I'm going to attach the top to the bottom and I'm going to gently place this on here first because I want to make sure that it is um, where I want it to be. Looks pretty good. So now I'm going to um, press here on the inside of this foot ring and you can hear it squeezing the slip out. Now everything should be pretty well attached. I'm not crazy about the transition on the interior between the foot and the dish and I'm actually going to go through and and cut with my knife um, just a little bit of an angle give a little angle to the foot 
just so the transition's a little bit more considered. And I'm holding my knife on a 45 degree angle. Pull that out. A tool that I really love are these, um, it's not even a tool, it's just a gift card. And I think they're, they make great ribs, you know, and you can just cut them into whatever shape you might need at the moment. And so I need something that'll just fit in there. So I'm just gonna trim this up, cut a little angle on it. So I just have this. I'm just gonna clean up that transition in there because it still wasn't quite the way I wanted it to be. Big on just making sure the way that things meet are, um, you know, I rely so much on seam lines and transitions in terms of my decoration that it's really important for me to have that just be right on so that I don't struggle with that when I'm decorating. Okay, and last thing I'll do with the pot <coughs> oriented this way is just clean up the bottom of the foot. So back to my trusty sure form and just clean up this, the rim of this foot. I want this to come to that nice sort of soft um, taper almost like a point. And get my trusty sponge out, getting rid of any water, because I really like it to be just barely wet. Let's make that sort of, that edge go into, into that space in between my fingers. So I'm gonna clean this rim up, and it's gonna get you know, it's very similar to the foot that I just did and the majority of my rims, of all, of all, all the other dishes I make. I am keeping my hand on the outside of the dish so that any pressure that I'm putting on the pot, on the rim with my sure form, doesn't whack it out of shape too much. So I have this really, um, this, this rim is, I think it's really nice, you know, it transitions really nicely to this really nice taper. But again, if I were to leave it like this, it would be too sharp and it would, it would break for sure. So I've got to clean that up just a little bit so that it's not quite as sharp and I need to refine it, take it off, take it down just a little bit. And uh, this is an edge that I sometimes do with my serrated rib. Make sure all the water's out of there and then I'll just squeeze that rim in between those, in that space in between those fingers. This is like a perfect rim, I love this. And then I'll just clean up this transition here with my rib. And this little spot here sometimes gives me a place to do little bits of decoration or Little embellishments here, just on that, you know, that slope that goes all the way around. So the last thing to do for this dish is to make two little handles, and um, they are, you know, a type of handle that I make. It's like a little pinched, bulbous kind of shape. And so whenever I make handles this way, I always make both of them together at the same time so that. I can make sure that they're going to be the same size. So I have my two handles, and now I'm going to pinch them out. Not too thin, because I, you know, I, I want them to be strong. If they get too thin with, uh, with the glaze on top of them, or even you know, if something were to fall on the finished dish and hit the handle, I, I wouldn't want it to break. So I don't pinch them too thin. I want to make sure that I try to pinch them the same size. So where I made the balls the same size, they should be should be pretty close. And that's really all I need them to be is, is pretty close. So those are good, about the same size. And that's what they look like on the inside. And now I'm just going to sort of stretch them out a little bit. So they have a nice volume on the inside. Rather than coming to a point, I want them to be full of air and not look squished. And that actually can be one of the hard one of the hard things about working with this kind of handle. And I'm just gonna put them on the side here in a little bit of water, but just a teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny bit because it's really pretty thin here. So, and I don't wanna 
distort the rim. I'm going to take this without trying to take too much of the life out of it. And this one it has seen better days, so I need to fix that. So does this one. They're both, both little, I got issues over here, so we'll just fix those. Try, definitely trying not to overwork it. And that is my footed serving dish.